Live. Okay. It says we are live, but are we live? Um, it says on my screen. Is it live? There we go. All right, so we are live now, and we are discussing the book Dawn by Octavia Butler. I have my lovely co-hosts here, Alicia and Ryan. Charles may be joining us here shortly, and <laughs> uh, Amber unfortunately could not make it, so... Um, yes, we will we will be missing her, but thinking of her while while we discuss the book. So, yeah. initial thoughts, everyone, on Dawn. What what was everyone's thoughts before they went into the book? Um. Uh, so yeah. I I really had no expectation going into the book. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what to think. Um, it, it's one of those things where um. You know, before just a month or two ago, I didn't even know uh, Octavia Butler existed. So it's definitely one of those things where it's like, all right, you know, see see a new perspective, see a different take on sci-fi. Um, and, and I feel like on the whole, my expectation on a different take is it, it definitely has a different take than the sci-fi that I'm used to reading. Um, yeah. In that I feel like it was uh, definitely from the beginning a very human story and really dealing on those like small microcosm of a very big event mm -hmm. um, and just kind of looking at like those personal human interactions, not so much like for me, especially I'm more like space opera and, you know, all these yeah. power dynamics and all that kind of things. Like this is just such a small microcosm. So it's definitely interesting and a different perspective that I'm not used to reading. Nice. Yeah, definitely. definitely. How about you, Alicia? I was intimidated because everybody that I know who had read Octavia Butler was like, she's so, especially in college, like everybody would put her on a pedestal, which she completely deserves. But it kind of intimidated me because I was like, am I too not smart for this? But I understood most of it. Mm -hmm. I'm newer to sci-fi, so I had no expectations. I kind of just went with the confusion because I had a feeling that that's what it was going to be. I find myself doing that a lot reading sci-fi. It's <laughs> just like, uh, it. I don't know if that makes sense right now, but I'll just keep <laughs> reading and maybe it'll make sense later. <laughs> yeah. The audiobook yeah. definitely helped because yeah, there was no way I would be able to help. read any of those names. Yeah, I, I probably no could have kept track of the names a little better if if I was seeing them with my eyes. I. I kept a bit of a cheat sheet with some of the main characters but like some of her like alien family or whatever the like minor characters that were only there like in and out could not keep track of who each one of those were yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i was having a real hard time being like which one is this because they would introduce themselves with like 10 names uh-huh i was just like who are you <laughs> like which one are you because you have like 10 names when you're introducing yourself to someone yeah um, I found this very consumable, though. It didn't, like, yeah. have any complex prose or anything like that that, you know, left you left you wondering what was what was going on. So. Yeah. I don't know, because you listened to the audiobook, right? I did, yes. Okay. So did it freak you out every time the audiobook narrator said Lilith? It, like, it made my, like, gave me goosebumps every time. Like, it freaked me out. Uh, I, I don't know about <laughs> her name specifically, but this this book had me feeling just kind of icky like yeah, exactly. all the way I was, through <laughs> i was like it, the audiobook narrator was great but it was just like the way she said certain she said certain names is just like unnerving i was like uh-uh <laughs> like like a nails on the chalkboard thing or or yeah, yeah it was just like when you like and like they said it they said lilith so deadpan that it was creepy and like oh, okay Listening to it at night when you live by yourself is just like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. All right. Well, we start out with our main character, Lilith, and she wakes up a captive or something. She's woken up multiple times before it's insinuated, but it seems like this time's going to be permanent and she's around aliens that are humanoid but have like just tentacles everywhere like i was I, I guess i kind of imagine it like uh like humanoid type shape but like kind of like a sea anemone but like an entire body of those little sea anemone tentacles 
Yeah, yeah, that's how I kind of pictured it too. It's like there were just like fingers everywhere, you know. Right. right. Kind of felt like Medusa. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Like, very Medusa like. <laughs> and, and it was really interesting to me that like she spent a lot of time talking about like just the natural human revulsion. Uh huh. Uh, to yeah. the to them, and they were saying, you know, how it was a process just to introduce themselves to humans because it took them so long to get over their just natural fear of it. It was, I thought that was interesting that it was kind of like a universal issue. Um, mm -hmm. it, it kind of reminds me of, uh, oh gosh, what is it? Well, the Arthur C. Clarke book where the humans evolved. End. Yeah, childhood's yeah. end where the uh, the creatures were, they look like devils and it was like, oh, you know, this was so traumatic to your species. That's why you guys have this image of this devil throughout your history. Mm -hmm. And just one of those things where it's just like your entire species just cannot deal. <laughs> hey, Charles, you made hey, it. Hey, Charles. Oh. All right, Charles. So put you on the spot right away. What, what were your what were your feelings of this book before you even started it? Wait, before I even started it? Yeah, what were your preconceived notions? I had zero. You will know if any if you know one thing about me, I go into any <laughs> with like zero expectations. I just go like, oh, pretty cover. Okay, someone told me to read this. Okay, let's read this. <laughs> All right. Well, what are your initial thoughts then? I thought it's the best comparison I can give to this is like reading N.K. Jemison without the stylistic writing. Okay. If that, have you guys that read N.K. Jemison? Mm -mm. Okay, that 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 was a that was a bad analogy. <laughs> no, it makes sense because I just finished the Inheritance trilogy. It makes it makes sense. But you get what I mean. Like it's still like yeah. highly intellectual, very grand world building. But N.K. Jemison writes very stylistically. Which some people may not hey, vibe with, but I love the I love the way how it started out and where it ended. I mm -hmm. thought it was really, I thought it was a really great way to build the world without overwhelming the readers. Even though I did feel overwhelmed, oh yeah, but it was still you got enough where you can like I can make sense of what the story is and what mm -hmm. where things are going. So like I I really enjoyed it. Okay, cool, cool. So we were just talking as you came in about the appearance of the of the aliens, and any anything to add on that? I just imagine like a sun with like a face and like just tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> like, I didn't want to picture it because it grossed me out. <laughs> Wait, wait, hey, there the you sensory go. <laughs> tentacles. I was like, oh no, 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 no. And then how would they use them later on in the book? You're just like, oh, please stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, yeah, I, I, I guess in my mind, I just don't see that. Like, I understand that certain people would have a uh, a sense of like, oh, that is not cool. But like, it, it, it just to me, like, it didn't bother me so much. Like in the sense of like, okay, it just is what it is. But I'm I'm a very practical, you know. This is you know, and and it was interesting to me also in that uh, I'm not used to that kind of situation where they're just like, oh, hey, this is what happened. There's there's no intrigue. There's no like, oh, geez, you know, you know, it'll be interesting going through the series, seeing if there does develop any. It's all about like those small interpersonal relationships and more of a human thing than even dealing with the aliens per se but it's just the aliens that are causing that human friction yeah yeah and that's um, pretty much what octavia butler was known for was just putting a such a human stamp on these crazy uh or well crazy is a bad bad uh, descriptor but just these these out there stories these really imaginative stories Hi, Nicole. Hey, Nicole. Hi. Thanks for dropping by. Okay, I have one that works. It's like, especially when they get to the Earth scene, look at the Earth play area or whatever the, the, you want to call it. or whatever. It's very yeah. much like Lord of the Flies and like how you have a group of people. Okay, okay. I, I saw in the head shake, so I was like, at least this is a good one to talk about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I thought it was really interesting, especially when you flip the leading role and have it be a woman, I feel like it would be very different 
if like Joseph or Kurt mm -hmm. were the were the ones leading this group of individuals. So I thought that yeah. was I thought that was really interesting. It's like how would society start? It reminded me a lot of like Genesis, very biblical references, like the uh -huh. Adam and Eve type mantra. Um, really kind of seeing like kind of like how humans will collapse in on themselves without even with the alien interaction, even though they're told like, hey, these aliens are here to help us, they still manage to um, pretty much destroy themselves. By the end of this right. book, they're pretty much still fractured. And as the romance person in me, I'm mad about like I'm mad with like, <laughs> oh. Octavia. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I, I felt I felt Lilith's like pain. I was like, I want to reach in, I want to murder Kurt with my own hands. Like, how dare you? <laughs> yeah. And the, and then the aliens are like, Oh yeah, we just couldn't get. We there wasn't an entrance close enough. We didn't expect this. I'm we like, tried. I'm like, try harder. And then she's pregnant with his child. I was like, I hate you. <laughs> I was like, just just like add salt to injury. It's like your lover died, but hey. Now you're gonna have his baby, <laughs> and someone else. Like, wasn't the last sentence someone else was pregnant with his kid too? Well, yeah, it's yeah. like some kind of like weird like parallel like, or yeah. yeah, how how they you know evolve and and procreate and stuff. So, um, yeah, yeah. The, the the biology. Like, well, is... You should let me conj die. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about Nikonj then. So. Um, kind of creepy, like just I guess the aliens in general. But it's it was weird that he was supposedly, or well, it Nikonj was a child, but they were essentially grooming each other to be lovers. Or so, like there was some there were some crazy themes going on in this that just like with the captivity and the you know, just parallels to like slavery and almost like breeding stock too of, of like, oh, well, you're going to procreate because we just say you are. Um, we're going to, you know, I guess I don't trust the aliens as much as I should, or maybe, I don't know, how do you guys feel about the aliens' intentions? It came off as grooming a mm -hmm. little bit, and it just, I felt icky with that just in general. Yeah. But um, yeah, like you couldn't tell. There were there was, are all the aliens supposed to be sexually ambiguous? I'm assuming. So like, it would sound like a man, at least in the audiobook, for like a section, and then get very feminine in the next sentence. I was like really confused by that. I think so, they're genderless. Yeah, so yeah, they're like, oh, technically, they're three technically genders, like, right? Yeah, there's three genders, and as I understood it, you had the male and female, and then you had the one that was neither. Yeah, the, the Uloi. Yeah, the, the Uloi was more of like the, uh, the kind of like in my mind, I, I like the one removed from the, the gender roles where they were kind of like, I guess in my mind, like, okay, here's the two teenagers, and I'm the adult <laughs> yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. You know, they're the hormonal yeah. ones. I'm the one that has more reason and is more detached. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> and she made, so the Lilith made the comment of like, they say they're not hierarchical, but the Uloi seemed in charge of everything. And so yeah. that's a, kind of a funny, uh, funny parallel you make there of like the emotionless referee in the middle of <laughs> the middle right. of the relationship. All right, Nicole says, watching from the beginning because I was late. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> but I didn't read the synopsis, so I didn't know what to expect, but it was definitely kind of eerie. Yeah. 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 Just eerie all throughout. Because the... I wanted to believe Lilith most of the time, but I was second-guessing myself, too, when the humans were starting to run away. And it was like, well, could they be right? I, the, I thought the timing on that was was good. It was really well because I was feeling that same way of like, well, we've just kind of taken everything that these aliens have said at face value, and you know, oh, you know, are they up to something more nefarious? Oh my goodness, Aaron Ben Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Get <laughs> out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I think Fledgling is the one where she gets more um, obviously sexual in her books. I think it's Fledgling. Fledgling, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't read that one, but I haven't uh, read that either. Yeah, I mean, Nicole, there were penetration scenes with lots of tentacles, and oh at, at least there was there was one at the end. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> leave your romance brain out of this book. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I tell you, you already like broke like the cardinal rule. She killed the, the hero. <laughs> uh, but I I like I sided with Lilith throughout pretty much the entire book. Mm-hmm. I like I one hundred percent was behind her and like looking at the other characters, I'm like, is it because she's a woman? That you're not believing what she's telling you. I would at least have been smarter about trying to figure things out than I thought like Kurt and a lot of the different factions. I think they were Mm -hmm. more responding out of fear instead of going like, this is our situation. Let's try to navigate the situation together. But it felt like it was more just panic. I think that had to do with a lot with the, I'm going to call them the aliens. They really didn't give the humans like concrete like hey you're on a ship hey this yeah. is what's going on here's a little quick orientation but on the other hand i wonder if like people would panic if they knew what kind of what, what kind of context they're in right off the bat so it's like that's why they didn't say anything i think but i think what like they kind of hinted that it was possibly a mistake because yeah. lilith does mm-hmm. say that there's a point where because he didn't explain really what was going on and they relied solely on Lilith to do a lot of the explanation, she became the scapegoat and right. became the natural target of everyone's frustrations and anger is because they're looking at her for all the answers and think that she's part of them when Right. And they, they described how yeah. like, you know, they had made those basic modifications to her where she mm-hmm. did heal faster than everyone else. And they started to notice that where it was, it was like, no, she's not completely human. And yeah. And it definitely feels like, yeah, the, the aliens did make a mistake. Like, in theory, they should have done the same thing with everyone that they did with her, where, okay, wake her up, see how she responds, you know, over a course of so many, you know, months, years, whatever. Um, I wonder if it was, um, like, at some point, we get some more backstory as to why they did it the way they did. Uh, in the other books mm-hmm. like maybe we'll find out okay this is why they did it like this or yeah. maybe there is stuff that we don't know that's going on um and we but get a little I bit more because she was woken up before everybody else how much of it would be like stockholm syndrome sort of because she's adapting to what she's got not saying right it's perfect, but... eh. mm-hmm. i feel like the way you did it didn't sound... like she's very clearly against them but just reluctantly working for them that's was like where i kind of like it kind of saved it for me because like she really is caught between a rock and a hard place right throughout most yeah. of the narrative so it's like she either has to cooperate but i do think one thing that was interesting that butler did is like we don't get too much of what happened to earth or like what actually went down how the aliens yeah. first got involved so like that's where i did kind of question when they said that we revere life I don't well, kind of hinted at it a little bit, but um, I really would like to see like more outside just of Lilith's perspective mm-hmm. about more mm-hmm. the overall world and getting more backstory on aliens. Yeah, definitely, and it um, uh, it just definitely felt like yeah, it's such a small microcosm. We're just taking everything at face value. You know, at this point, it's like okay, well, we nuked ourselves, and the aliens just happened to come by and pick up the pieces. Um, and it's definitely interesting in that, like, because they, they talk about, like, how they feel like humanity is so dangerous to them because they're so drawn to them. And they're mm-hmm. so, like, they, they talk about how they're just, like, to me, it almost sounds like, you know, uh, the whole process of them, you know, wanting to interbreed and all that stuff is almost like an addiction where they, yeah. like their genetic splicers of their own dna where they just they have to keep splicing themselves mm-hmm. yeah. um 
where it's like, okay, so you've got this, you know, point where it's like, okay, you're kind of addicted to this, but how does that make you very altruistic? You know, yeah. like, oh, I'm saving yeah. your race, but are you saving it but because you're molding you it in your own it? image? Exactly. You know, it's, yeah. Uh, Right, or that, and when, uh, yeah. I can't stop playing God. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. That's yeah. What I wonder. It's true. The... They can basically rewrite human the human genome with all yeah. the power that they give Lilith the cancer thing. Yeah. I just, yeah. I wonder how like human the child's gonna look because you do know that's gonna be the second book is the child, Lilith, and mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm like. Is it going to look human, or is it going to be like half and half, or what? I don't know. Well, they they said in one generation, right? The the change was going to happen, so it's going to look <clears throat> like you know something totally new, I guess. Ah, I've cheated. I've read the first like chapter too, so it's like already. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> I gotta know. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I. I'm suspicious of the aliens, definitely. Like, I was thinking, like, okay, did they... Because they have a lot of power over the humans. Like, they can just mix drugs, like or at least the Uloi can just mix drugs within their bodies and inject yeah. them into, <laughs> into humans to make them, you know, emotionally pliable or whatever. So it's like, did they start the war on Earth? You know, this whole agreement or whatever took place with people that aren't around anymore. No. Um, yeah. And then how um, how Nikanj would like be very creepy with Lilith and um, and Joseph. Joseph. Like, yeah. yeah, there was some serious rapey vibes going on when, you know, it seemed like he was like forcing the issue. Sometimes it's like, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Like, you know, really like, no, fuck no, I'm not doing this. And he's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry, but... it won't hurt. <laughs> well, he's like, and he's like, you know, you're you're saying no, but your body's saying yeah, it. like, it's oh. literally oh. written in the <laughs> like... Aaron, why are you bringing romance into this? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm going to go on record and say I'm being triggered by Aaron. He's bringing up romance in a science fiction is it, novel. Is it CMC <laughs> and I'm CMC not okay. <laughs> <laughs> the one part that I think is weird that was in the beginning when they woke her up the, I think it was either the first or the second time and they brought in that little I think it was a little boy Yeah. yeah. before oh, they put right, her to sleep right. for another 150 years oh, or whatever yeah. it was uh -huh. it was like what's okay that, <laughs> yeah, yeah it didn't really go anywhere with that because what she saw him in one of the plants or something after that in yeah. one of the pods right, right. later yeah but he's 10 years older, but yeah, it was really weird. And anybody else think that one scene with the other human was really uncomfortable? Oh, oh was, yeah, like, yeah. Which, I had to stop. Was I was he, like, I have to put this down Where she would have gotten raped if they hadn't have intervened. Yeah. Oh, with yeah, that the, guy the who was very human. emotionally undeveloped. Yeah, I remember. He had, like, yeah. Ew. Yeah, well, was, I had a note about that, yeah. Uh, so in a, in a section, it was getting to know the family and then searching for other humans. And then when she does find another human and then cringe. Yeah. <laughs> so. But like, but, I'm not okaying anything he did, but he was emotionally stunted. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Like, right, right. Well, yeah. or whatever. Or said. yeah, 14, I think is what the age yeah. they said, yeah. where it was just like, he didn't know how to behave with another human because mm -hmm. he hadn't seen one in so long. Well, yeah, and were the aliens like giving him mind jobs the whole time, like right through his life too? So, he's, you know. and then when she says, mind "You don't jobs. know," if you're, you're, you're I can't with you. Mother, I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's no. the best I could come this up. This is with. what happened. Like <laughs> all this that you mentioned, like my romance brain was not even paying attention. I was like trying to figure out other things. <laughs> I was not even reading the romance subsects. I was like, okay, I'm in science fiction. Let's put that out. Let's put that to the side. Mm -hmm. But now every, I'm like, oh, you said my job. I'm like, God, Aaron. <laughs> no, there's a lot of potential for fan fiction in here. Definitely. That's, that's, <laughs> when she now tells, I need when to go read some Ruby Dixon. Because now I want to read Alien so Romance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. What were you saying, Alicia? And the fact that he had, like, they told him he had 70 children 
or like some sort of humanoid type of like oh you don't yeah. Know oh yeah that was messed that's up that's just ew once again just goes into that that violation of that basic human feeling of like you know no that's my dna yeah and then when lilith yeah. says you don't know if they impregnated your mother or your sister like ugh. <laughs> It's just one of those things Lilith, where, like, she was pregnant. I was like, "Okay, that's this is wrong." <laughs> yeah, dude, that whole thing was like, you know, this whole plan that we had and we were gonna and... do. Oh yeah, we did it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like, oops. Whoops. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Whoops. But yeah, it was one of those scenes where I had to put down the book for a while. I'm like, I have to walk away from this <laughs> and watch mm -hmm. something for really? me for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got to talk about Nicole's comment here because, yeah, I had a note about this section too that the larger group of humans finally gets introduced to the aliens after the whole room being drugged and then an orgy happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> an orgy without calling it an orgy. At, le at least everyone that stayed <laughs> conscious, right? A few, a few people lost consciousness. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the drugs were that good. <laughs> Aaron yeah, and Alicia, okay. you guys read too much romance. <laughs> and this is coming from a romance reader. <laughs> like, you would read, like, the driest literary fiction book and be like, huh, wasn't that one scene a little bit like, kind of like this type of kink in a romance? I'm like, oh my Did goodness. Did we say that in funny? Oh my goodness. You know, you know, reminds me of this Katie Robert moment. <laughs> <laughs> I can't with you guys. <laughs> Oh yeah, when they left her with that that human, like the aliens had no sense of urgency or like care, and so that's that was probably my biggest gripe with them is they they could kind of yeah. you know. Be I feel like bag. you see that they do care through that like mating when they pair them off with the humans, and um, what was that um when one went catatonic or something like that with Kirk? Do you remember that scene in there? Uh, let's see. Yeah. Where it like yeah. literally like broke down almost and was like oh, had to be right. consult. I can't remember. Oh exactly yeah, where. when they first when the humans started leaving the encampment and and yeah. like so I think it's one of those things where at least my takeaway from that was that you know what the humans experience is not nearly the same as what the aliens experience and that for them it's more of a um, you know it's almost like they're changing themselves to fit in with these people, you know, type of thing where they don't function without them anymore. Like where they're talking about these, you know, like the alien family structures are there because that's how they function. And, you know, they're molding the humans, but the humans are not there yet at all. This is the first generation where it's like, dude, no, like yeah, no. they don't <laughs> understand it. They can't comprehend that kind of like attachment. Yeah. Mm hmm. Does she ever say specifically what year it's supposed to be in the book at all? So. I can't remember I off the top. I don't remember. remember. So. No. I don't recall. It just sounds like, you know, the perceived near future, whether it's yeah. you know, 20 years down the road or maybe 100 or 200 years. It was just strange because they said that Lilith was, was asleep for 250 years, but she only aged two years, so she was only 28, physically yeah. speaking. Right. It's like they literally just put humans on ice. Like, okay, Kurt. Yeah. Like, when they put Kurt up, I was like, yeah. well, and, and I'm also you know, wondering. I know he's going to get experienced, experimented on, but I was like, Kurt, you deserve to die. You killed my shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but I wonder if in the later books we find out some motivation for that. Like, maybe the aliens have some underlying thing that, like, we need to get this done. Like, that's why they accelerated it. They waited as long as they could, tried to do their very best to prepare, but now it's like, oh, shit, we need to go ahead and get this done. Yeah. For some reason that Maybe. we don't know about from them yet. Mm -hmm. But that's why I was wondering if they just made Kurt out to be the bad guy, because wasn't he the one that, like, got upset with the other, with the one woman who wouldn't pair up with one of the, one of the men and Willis yeah. stopped them from raping her? I think that was him. I can't yeah, think so it there, the moment, but... was it or what was it, Peter? There was I know Peter. It was that fight scene. Yeah, yeah. Like the one that got his nose, holding her his down arm and, and, stuff. and yeah, yeah. So Peter got like rewritten or like isolated by the aliens for yeah. a bit after that, and then and then Kurt kind of took over as the leader of the, the resistance or or whatever. 
Yeah. I still hate Gabriel and Tate. They're just like, when Lilith is like, hey, just sit around us. and let Kurt hack Joseph to death. They're like, oh, we didn't know. I was like, oh. <laughs> and and then go we tried to we tried to help him but he was too far his gone. head was seven like, I was like it's yeah. like just all of us watching I'm like oh that, that person's getting murdered he's we're getting hacked in, but we we didn't think we ha- we could do anything we didn't think he would do it so we'll just wait yeah. oh he's dead sorry By, sorry bystander <laughs> syndrome the one that to the was, extreme <laughs> that you must decapitated him like it was yeah it was yeah it was like really, the, was the really death dead. was like. <laughs> I'm like, okay, there's like killing and then there's like you just like dismembered someone. Yeah, their their sense of empathy is is weird because what's the first thing they do when um uh when the alien found Joseph's body is like, oh Lilith, come on over. Come on over, I know, check like, this out. His body. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you just healed me, I'm not gonna do anything for the guy that you're in love with or whatever. Right. And like, like it took us too long. And Lilith's like, what the hell? Well, what was interesting to me was the fact that, you know, they talked about that it was his ability to heal that ended up causing him to die, mm-hmm. where I think it's showing that unintended, unintended consequence where, you know, we may have the best goals, but that doesn't mean it's always going to turn out right. I feel like that's kind of an overall arching theme of the story where it's like, you know, all these people have these goals and they they may be lofty, but, you know, nothing rarely goes to plan. Yeah, oh, yeah, Ron, it was it was pretty gruesome. It was brutal, and they just said yeah. it like it was like a random sentence, like it was just no inflection, no nothing. He was he was practically decapitated. I was like, wait, what? I re- like rewind the the audiobook. I was like, say that again. Yeah, I think it was a really well how she did that whole sequence, and then what led up to like the whole humans versus aliens fight. Kind of backing to what you said, Ryan. Um. It was like one of the first actual proofs, like looking at another human, where like you saw like this person being regenerated or self healing. Because I think they described like Kurt just pretty much lost it and thought Joseph was now just like a weird alien Mm -hmm. hybrid that he wasn't human anymore. I think everything else in the book, a lot of the humans were able to say like, oh, this is just an illusion. This is not actually real. This is not actually this. This is not actually this. But I think that was the first instance where they saw like actual proof right. that Lilith or Joseph could be something more than just human. And I think that freaked them out. Right. Which Especially I thought because... was like I thought it was very normal for like a human to react. They're like Definitely you where generate it. <laughs> and that's just it, you know, where they think, okay, I've got these other humans on my side and I'm trusting them. And then it makes you question whether or not they're human because they don't know what the aliens are capable of or not capable of. Yeah. Yeah. Especially with the weird, like, where they can, like, zap you if you accidentally touch, like, a tentacle. Oh, yeah, just insta-kill you, like, oops, you touched <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> it made me think of, just like, the description, I was like, this is like, it's like an eel and an octopus, like, in my mind. It was like, a, an like, appendage, like. It's just like an appendage, like, if you touch, like, oh, sorry, like, oh, oh, I didn't mean to yeah. kill you. This, this is my really big tentacle, and I can open it, and there's, you know, private dangly stuff in there, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't see our private parts until you open up the thing. It was just, it was so weird. It was like, wait, what? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I guess in my mind, it, it just kind of like, you know, your private parts hanging off your side here, and. You always wear just a, a sleeve over it, and you know. <laughs> I kind of wish there was. A, I want to see a picture of stuff. how these aliens look. I was I was looking to see if there was like a illustrated edition, just out of curiosity, because I was I wanted to see, but there doesn't seem to be one. Really, which surprises me because of how popular Octavia Butler is. Yeah, I don't know. I was just picturing like elephant trunks out someone's neck. That's on each side. That's that's all the brain power I put into it. Oh, yeah, there is no official. <laughs> what? Oh my goodness, Nicole! Is is it going to be an amazing orgasm, or am I going to die? Place. Either way, it will be a fun time. Yeah, there's a time and a place. We're talking about science fiction. <laughs> Uh, 
All right, let's see. I, oh, I had a I had a question for everyone. Where did Tate go after the fight? Like, didn't they, they like separated her or something? Or they put her like I don't know. I, I we got to a point after oh, didn't the fight they go? where Lilith was was like saying she missed Tate or something like that. And like, oh, didn't they take the, them to America they, to the Earth? They take them, they took them to Earth. Them. Oh, okay, okay. They and then Lilith was there. like all pissed because she wanted to go. They held her back. Yeah. Yeah. Because she was. I pregnant. think Tate and Gabriel went to Earth. Yeah. Okay. Because Lilith is prego. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's probably yeah. going to be a big uh, big crux of book two. But yeah, is she supposed to like? Oh, I was so mad at the end. Like, <laughs> like you put this, you put her in this impossible situation. <laughs> I hope we, like Lilith just goes like just like goes on a killing spree, just like kill all the aliens. I feel like that's going to her be and her baby. Three. There's three books in this. So it's going to be that's going to happen. Book three. <laughs> yeah. Either way. Oh my goodness, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I now see someone going to like take this book and write a fanfic but make it smutty? It's probably out there. It's, it's probably out there. We, we, it's yeah, probably we out haven't there. gotten there yet. <laughs> and I guess we know which series. what our next book review will be. <laughs> yeah. Octavia <laughs> Butler bringing us alien porn, you know, or before alien there was romance a time for before, alien porn. You know, before it was cool. Before her time. <laughs> Before her time. Um, yeah. <laughs> I did order all of the books literally right after I finished this. I was like, I can't not continue when that it ends like that. Like, what the hell? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, really? It ended. I was like, okay, I can I can read book two in like six months. We're good. <laughs> hey Bree. Hey Bree. Yeah, Amber, our other buddy reader, asked on, us on Boxer if we're going to continue. And I don't know, we might um, down the road, but Next month is the murder of Mr. Wickham. I'm so excited. <laughs> which, which, so is it? It's like all the female lead characters of all the Austin it's books. All, the, all crime. the characters that got got together in all of Jane Austen's books end up getting sent to a house for a murder mystery party, and Miss uh, Wickham gets killed. And then they try to figure awesome. out who killed Wickham. Awesome. Wickham is the worst all character in all of the books. So. <laughs> is that a romance? Or a murder mystery. I feel I have a feeling like it's like a cozy murder mystery. Feels because it feels doesn't more seem cozy like from the sound of it. Yeah, uh, that's what, I'm looking it up right now. Look, my brother sent it to me. He was like, "It's about Jane Austen. You'll want this." <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Like, well, Ryan's gonna have to read Pride and Prejudice before going to this next one. Obviously, oh, is, is what, <laughs> what's gonna Wait, happen. Ryan, you haven't read Pride and Prejudice? <laughs> no, I, I. You know what? For some reason, and like Aaron and I have been friends forever and always been sci fi nerds, like through and through. <laughs> and, you know, Aaron went in the romance direction and I am totally supportive of it. I totally understand, but I just cannot do it. I cannot. <laughs> like, it's just one of those things where, uh, you know, with his novel and stuff, he was like, hey, you should check this out. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to read it. And I got like three pages in. I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do this. I'm sorry. I really tried. I got a couple pages in. I just cannot do it. That's well, I, don't, I don't know you, why you, I think you like trying to struggle prejudice. for me. Pride and Prejudice is, is really good. Though. Pride and Prejudice is great. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really good because oh, when Darcy and like I forgot her, I forgot the hero's name now. Elizabeth. Dang it. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. When they have that um scene, in, I think it's a scene in the rain. I was like, that's from the movie. <laughs> no. Hey. I'm talking about the scene when she gets hey. the letter. Just, he just, hands her okay. the letter because it was after. I would have to say reading no Jane Austen. Time. You have to read. You have to watch the movie. To get a sense Not of her, her writing is very dry. Two thousand five. Uh, what? No. Dry. Oh, okay. writing is dry. But it's, like, if you're it's not a used lot, to it, it's, a lot it's very book. dry to read. I I must disagree with that. Hey, I, I feel yeah. like the heights. books. The books do not. So the the movie adaptations of any of her works don't have her commentary on <laughs> everything going on, and that is the funniest part. And the witty commentary. All of her books like that. Austin was okay. a savage back in the day. <laughs> Aaron, we're going to fight. I <laughs> the movies are where it's at. Pride and Prejudice with Keira Knightley. 
That's oh, well, okay, now we are going to fight because it's all about the 1985 <laughs> miniseries. Colin Firth? <laughs> You, oh my goodness. Can you remove these two from, the, from this live show? That's okay, my final not paper the right in college was all about Jane Austen, okay? It was 50 pages on Jane Austen and irony. I'm a, I'm more of the Bronte sisters. I like the darkness than Jane Eyre. No, moodiness. I'm Jane Austen. Wothering the moodiness Heights, of it all? Wuthering Heights, I, w- I obsess when Don't I read, you when dare I read call that, that a romance. That's not a freaking romance. It That's is a romance. Else. It's a paranormal it's romance. It has a happily ever after when they're both dead. It's, it's so else. poetic and beautiful. <laughs> they all, like, Trust me. He's a fantastic Harley, Jane writer, is, but Jane literally don't like anybody too. in the book. They're all Rochester awesome. has his like, wife like, locked up upstairs. Uh, can't write better yeah. stuff than this. See, not Nicole minis- agrees oh, with me. Nicole, well, <laughs> I might not be able to make the next uh, Who Picked This Book Club, Nicole. I know. Considering how you and I bonded, we were like, oh, you love Jane Austen. Oh, another person that loves Jane Austen. Thank God. <laughs> okay, Ryan, what do you look for in a great book? And then we can see if we can find you the right romance. Uh, it's one of those things, like... I'm not too sure. Like I said, for some reason to me, it has to be set in sci-fi. Like I've branched out into other things. It just has to grab me. Um, I know a series that I read these last few years, um, the Demon Cycle series, uh, which was firmly a fantasy, um, but it was just like a concept that I had no, uh, (laughs) like even thought of like, um, it was a series where it was kind of this the alternate earth where um, there was this, uh, you know, history in the past where supposedly these demons came out of the ground uh, at night. And it's been 2000 years since they've been seen, you know, no one's heard or seen from them. Um, and then they start showing up and, you know, this little kid, you know, realizes, you know, what humanity is like in that, you know, these demons come out of the ground at night and basically terrorize. And, um, it was one of those things where, like I said, I, I'm not a, <laughs> not a sci- uh, fantasy person, but it really grabbed me and it was very interesting to me. And I tore through, I think it was like four or five books. Like it just, it just has to hook me. Like even, even some of the classic stuff, like, um, um, like Dickens and stuff, I, I've given some of it a try. It's just like, eh, I can't get to that point where I'm like, okay, I'm invested. Well, Dick- I can't do Dickens. A Tale of Two Cities. A Tale of, of like two trash Stop cans. by the word. <laughs> God. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know how many times the boy in the graveyard, and I'm just like, okay, I've like, and then a couple years later, I try to go back, and I'm like, nope, can't get past it. Nope. I'm with you on the Dickens thing. I. Yeah. I can't. I have to be in the mood. I can't. I can, the most I can handle is Oliver Twist. The only one I like is Great Expectations. I couldn't even. I got. I read page one. I was like, nope. <laughs> but I'm a class. I'm just. I guess. I'm That's what I was about a- to recommend. You'll like Amanda Boucher. Yeah. I, and Nicole, I think she. I think she's too steamy. But yeah, yeah. We I feel like we need to like give you a like book that's like low steam. 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 But I don't know if the steam would bother Ryan so much. I, it's, it's more just like yeah. the angst. Is, high angst would probably be too much. Oh. Okay. Oh no, the, the, that series is a great series. Um, the pitches. So we follow like an outlaw kind of like crew that's traveling through space, led by a female captain. She stops at this planet to get her ship fixed. And then she runs into our hero, who is a bounty hunter, but she doesn't know. Okay, he's I, a bounty gosh, hunter. I need to look at some of the ones that I've read. I know that I read one that I I likened to kind of a like Farscape with a female uh, protagonist, where it was like, uh, you know, basically um, the government knew about this spaceship out by Jupiter for like fifty years, but you know, back in the fifties, they had no way to get there. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, in modern times, they finally had a way to get there. And she ends up going there and uh, getting the spaceship running and basically jetting off on adventures with other aliens. Um, and I, I, there's nothing worse than when, like, you read a book or two and then you're like, okay, I'm ready for the next one. And yeah. it doesn't come out and you forget about it. And now I don't even know what the name of that series was. <laughs> Oh, no. It's like, no. Nicole, we need to pick. We need to pick another series because that series is not. Big series by Davy Evans. The first one is Rain and Rain and Ruin. Yeah, 
Rain and Rowan. Honestly, I just want to throw you off the deep end. Go like, read Immortals After Dark fantasy. by Chris Lee Cole. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> but I mean, you're an Anne Rice fan, so you you like Cresley right. Cole. Right. So, like, yeah. and that's just it. Like, I've read pretty much all of Anne Rice's vampire novels. Um, Never read Anne Rice. And uh, also her witches series, the witches of Mayfair, um, which I I really enjoyed. And it's one of those things that that's what killed me with all the the vampire movies and stuff in the two thousands, where it was just like, no, it's not about being sexual it's about those emotions yes, it about like yes, yes it is no <laughs> it's one of those things where like to me i'm like no i i i, I grew up with the ann rice where it's like where they talk about when they become vampires their genitals just stop working and it's just like it's about that angst of like dude you're immortal and you deal with these other immortal people and like your love and hate for them like constantly battling each other <laughs> you know where it's like i love them but i hate them i love them but i hate them I did oh, really so like the, okay. Yeah. I did <laughs> really like the, the movie from the <laughs> Like we break it down for romance readers. I'm like, oh hate to love. We got booked for that. All right. Don't worry, Nicole. I'm I'm working on him. He's gonna read Ice Planet Barbarians, whether he I, likes he, it or not. He's already sent me some pictures. He's like, oh check out what I got, it's special felt edition. Really bad yeah. In the audiobook. That first chapter was really yeah. bad. In the first yeah, one. I do have the I do have the special edition reprint, so yeah, that's better. But I have the I have the audiobook when it was the original and yeah, I even Yeah, I've listened to that one too. Holy yeah. crap. It was a bit of a rough start, yeah. Yeah. I my friend who has read all of them told me to skip the first book completely. She was like, oh, go to really? book two. Because she 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 knows like rape is a thing for me. Like she know and mm -hmm. she was like, just skip to book two. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But she's I read some all books. of them. You should read QB Tyler, Ryan. I'm not just You're a project with you Charles now. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right that you're people who know QB Tyler. Right. I'm like, that's that's throwing you on the deep end. Oh jeez. He'll never come back. <laughs> oh Alicia, what movie were you talking about? Oh, uh inter the um interview with a vampire from the early nineties. I loved that movie. Like that movie's great. I know it's oh, not me. I know it's not the book. The movie's fantastic. All we need is like vampires being sparkly, looking good. That's all. Oh, that's geez. all we ask for. That's all, all we just want is our Bella and our Edward. That's no. All we need. Oh, God. All I we just, need. Yeah, you as, say that, as Charles. English major, that book should not have been a book. Okay, like I could, I in the first chapter, I picked out like fifty mistakes that well, would have been picked up by a copy editor. <laughs> well, let's not get angry because Stephanie Meyer got hers, okay? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, I have to give it up for Stephanie Meyer. Like, she did. Well, if you want to go, go down that route, um, Fifty Shades of Grey is a sexy version of that, of mm -hmm. Twilight's yeah. sexy fanfic. I have to give these books, like, their credit, even though they they don't hold up. I have to give them their credit. Because Twilight led to the YA boom, oh, then you got Hunger Games, Fifty Shades of Grey put romance back on the map. Absolutely. And they like, made erotic BDSM romance. Yeah. Cool. So I, 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 I get like they don't age well, but like I still like go like, I, re I respect if you love Twilight or if you love Fifty Shades. Like it had its place. Right. And if it got you into the genre. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. That was the thing. My friend thing. handed me Twilight because she knew I was a reader, and I'm like, I can see where someone this would be like their bridge book, but like mm -hmm. I was way past that point. By that point, I was like, I'm too old for this. Yeah, I, I like, think it's too, really interesting. Like if you read YA or sometimes some adult books where they usually feature like a very prominent romance at the center, especially YA. Why, if you read a lot of YA, it does kind of prime you for romance in yeah. a lot of ways. Like contemporary YA is essentially just romance. Mm -hmm. Like Pretty Simon nice, versus the yeah. Homo Sabies Agenda, yeah. any Cassandra Clare, Saba Tahir, all those authors, they all have like a core romance, even though it's not about the romance, but there is like Nicola Yoon, their romances. I think same to some adult, some like adult titles too. They can feature romance in them and like, varying degrees yeah. but yeah 
I think that's just interesting when it but when it gets labeled romance, there's that stigma. See, I missed the whole YA boom. Like by the time like Divergent and all that stuff was coming out, I was like into all my classics. I was reading Jane Austen. Uh, you haven't read Hunger Games? Pete and yeah. Katniss forever. Nope. Yep. Uh, Never I'm read right it. there. I'm right there. You haven't read Hunger Games? No. Oh, really? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I think we just broke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Aaron can back me up on this. Like, the Hunger Games trilogy is probably one of the best YA trilogies. It it was readable for me, so yeah. Hey, yeah, and she kills were... characters. I mean, I'm not against it. I just I totally missed the bandwagon on it. <gasps> yeah, I I mean, hurt, that hurts my soul. I don't know. It's one of those things where <laughs> I, I watched a few of the movies and I was like, ah, I'm good. I'm good. I don't uh, need to dive do deeper. Like I don't do know. It it's just like, eh. but it is interesting in that, like, it definitely even something like the Hunger Games. What was it? I think I watched like the first Maze Runner movie or whatever, where it was, you know, it's looking at what happens to when society breaks down and which ways it can go. And same thing. I'm even thinking about like you know things like The Walking Dead and just like how people deal with these epic changes to you know what we considered normal life and how society you know falls apart and reorganizes itself mm-hmm. and even something like this, this yeah. where even like this where uh with octavia butler it's you know it's an outside force pushing on humanity where in you know things like the hunker games it's humanity pushing on itself um, and I think that's kind of interesting just where you do. You have these, um, I guess in my mind, sci-fi pushes more where it's like you've got an outside thing that's pushing on humanity. It's not humanity actively destroying itself on its own. It's got this outside influence. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, there are, there's there's a couple series where um, it is. Have you read The Expanse? um i have i've read most of i petered out towards the end yeah like the last few I books i was TV like show. i'm obsessed yeah with it right yeah <laughs> um i got to in the expanse what did i get to um i got to when they were on the alien planet in the books okay. i got okay. there and then i petered out and I that's about where like i got to the series four? also yeah, yeah. Four, I think, four or five i, I think I yeah i was out. did you get to the alien planet it was so long ago that I don't even yeah. remember. Yeah, it was where they went. <laughs> like, Holden and the crew had gone through the ring and gone to a new planet. And they were trying to deal with these colonists and what was going on in this planet. Yeah. But yeah, it was one of those things where it, it's just interesting to me to see those interactions where, like I said, I feel like sci-fi is more of that external. You've got something that's causing humanity to do this or that. Not necessarily, I feel like the more the young adult stuff and whatnot is more of a, you know, dealing with the humanity by itself. Yeah. I think that speaks to the age group too, right? Because it's it's these, mm-hmm. you know, budding adults that are still dealing with authority in probably a pretty heavy way and, you know... Uh, you know, liking well, that, that idea of breaking loose, you know, or of some yeah. kind of different societal structure altogether. Right, right. Well, well, and I think that's definitely telling, you know, even in society now, where we, we look at people, you know, in their 30s and stuff, we remember corded phones and stuff like that. We remember, you know, things used to be so much different. We remember going outside and our parents being like, come home when it's dark. You know, no, now no, your your parents no. like sitting there like, um, you moved ten feet to the left uh, an hour ago. What were you doing? You know, type of thing <laughs> at your friend's house. I was tracking you the whole time. Where, um, you know, the societies and the the influences on kids are a lot different than what it was back then, where we were a little oh, yeah. bit more disconnected. Mm-hmm. We were forced to go outside if we weren't. Outside, there was but I mean, a- even something like that kind of ties in where, like, in my mind to this book where, you know, these aliens are watching everything. They're they're observing everything. They're, yeah. But it's that kind of thing mm-hmm. where it's like, it's like the parents that 
don't quite know how to parent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they they, yeah. they think they know what they're doing. They think they're trying to do what's best. But is the reality that? Yeah, definitely. I got that uh, that vibe from the aliens and them not quite knowing what they're doing and making lots of mistakes and just not understanding humans and, and their behavior. But also I, not owning up for the mistake. Right. I do think it's interesting too um how even like if the aliens didn't intervene, these especially these group of humans could not even survive in like the simulated earth that they had mm -hmm. aboard the ship. And I think it's yeah. a nice parallel to how easy you can collapse like human society. Like if we all were like thrust out into the wilderness into like survive uh -huh. i would be dead by day two <laughs> <laughs> well or you know, all of us would be, or, or some of yeah. us may survive a little bit longer i know how to but, fish um, i'm okay yeah. but i really <laughs> liked how she used science fiction to study and reflect human nature in Absolutely. a very interesting way i think sometimes my gripe with science fiction and fantasy is that sometimes it could be more about like for science fiction more about the science of like the world and what's going on. So you just have countless, countless dumps of info dumps. Yeah. Whereas in this one, she kept it very character focused and gave you the information as the character went throughout the narrative. So you can still focus on the character and her journey while getting these details that slowly fill in the world instead of opening up like a 600 page tome and like having the first 300 pages be on the year of 18, da 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 da. On this, da 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 da. So I uh -huh. like that she incorporated that well into the story because that's sometimes the gripe that I have about some yeah. science fiction and fantasy. This, info just, I just hate info dumps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like it when you can weave it into the story where it makes sense. And this book was not even that long compared to since it is science fiction. Yeah. Like it was on the relatively tame, like 300, 400 pages, which is like... I was expecting piece. it to be like 600 pages. And then when I looked at the physical book and it wasn't even 300, I was like, what? I was like, what? Yeah. Like Butler two. wasn't known for writing tomes, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, she definitely yeah. kept it tight. Like, I really liked that it was. It was such a such an intimate view. And like I said, that kind of ties into that, you know, it was just narrator's point of view where you, you're still left kind of questioning, like, hey, are there other ulterior motives going on that we just don't know about but she kept it so tight and so you you felt personally like you were right there you totally agreed with lilith you know you were on her side but you were still kind of like you know as the reader you're kind of taking sitting back and saying wait should i be this trustworthy of the narrator yeah mm -hmm. you know it's like you notice something's off and but you don't know exactly right and it's yeah, just one of those things it. where she's just kind of taking it in stride and you're just like would I trade that in stride if someone was like, yeah, hey, sorry, this is how it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the lack of control that, that any of the humans had was really disturbing to me. Yeah, they and had just, zero. <laughs> yeah, it just, it, any time that it was highlighted, it just made me so uncomfortable. But it's, you know, I mean, that's how people in the real world have have lived unfortunately still live you know their slavery is still a real thing and you know she she wrote the parallel in really well it's just crazy to think that this was written in 87 and it's still yeah it's still right a lot of yeah. stuff that a lot of like older sci-fi doesn't hold up this uh -huh. is yeah that's right. true yeah. yeah definitely uh you can tell like she's a, a really good writer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cuz it's hard to like build a world that she does in that little amount of pages and still make it make absolute sense and keep you in grip, keep you gripped mm -hmm. from beginning to end. All right, well my last thought on the book was uh, I think humans are a drug to the Owen Kali because they are overly obsessed and when they were in the like pretend earth the Uloi were like hanging out with the humans so much it was making them sick or something like that. And they, and they like the their family members would have to come and like physically remove them. So I definitely right. think there's something more serious going on with the uh with the aliens. I hope that's delved into with the next two books. 
I will let you guys let me know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it will be at least a month if we continue on this. Um, so we'll yeah. definitely throw an invite out your way. Um, yeah, just and inv to... invite me or I'll never get to book two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyone else have any final thoughts? Oh, do we go star ratings real quick? Oh, yeah, sure. Star ratings. I'll let you go first, Aaron. All right. Um, I enjoyed it, so I gave it five stars. Made me think about some stuff. Um, I think I'd probably have to give it three and a half to four. Like, it's interesting. I'm glad I read it. And I kind of want to see where it goes. It's one of those things where I think I'd probably struggle, though, in that, like, I would need a group to force me to read the next one. Yeah. Like, like that deadline of being like, okay, I got to get this done. Mm -hmm. it, it'd always be like, okay, I've got time. I'll get it. I'll get it. Um, but like I said, it's, it's one of those things where it's also interesting to me um, in that um, it's a new perspective. It's a different perspective, something that I'm not used to. Like I said, I, I'm more the space opera type person where I want to know the, about the whole universe and how it's organized, where we are just seeing this little microcosm. And that's definitely a, a cool perspective and just to have something different. Cool. What about you, Alicia? Uh, I had to dock it a little bit with the like rapiness of it all. So I did, mm -hmm. I did like a whole point five. Nicole gave it a four star. That's that's her normal. It seems like for most of everything, <laughs> that's her normal. <laughs> All right, Charles. I would give you? it. I would say a three, probably when I actually go to rate on Goodreads. Um, it has. I liked a lot of the elements of the book, but it did feel a little bit incomplete when you got to the end. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like the book really kind of resolved. It's like, oh, okay, now, because I think the audiobook had like the first two chapters of the next book. So I was like automatically in that. So I, I think realistically, maybe a three. I could change it to a four. But I yes, think it's going to be a three. <laughs> Nicole, I also four wonder four if it was <laughs> meant to be all one book, the way the, the way it's cut off. Oh, maybe. And maybe they cut it, it up. It could be. For publishing yeah. reasons. Yeah. And they could just have published it as a three-part trilogy because of how it was cut off i was like okay yeah. it, it, it literally just ends yeah yeah like yeah. Lord okay of the on to the next book <laughs> yeah <laughs> kiddo cameo oh you know <laughs> it <laughs> the book really has to either piss me off or blow me away to change that i agree yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a few books that have pissed me off like that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it was Ancillary Justice, that series. It's a oh. sci-fi one. Oh. And at the end, I just was like, I hate you. I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I heard so many bad things about that series. My friend had to read it for, for school, and she was like, I, I was down, but like I saw that coming a mile away, and it was just like... <sighs> I was so disappointed. It's just like, yeah. really? That was it? Mm. Like, just the way that they buttoned it all up. It was just like, oh, that's garbage. I forced myself through Man in the High Castle the Ew. whole time oh, no. thinking like, oh, this book is terrible. This book is terrible. This book is terrible. And then I get to the end and I'm like, what the hell? If I had a fireplace, I would have thrown it? it right in there. <laughs> Did you is it a series, right? It's it's or a it's single a book. book. Yeah, so I don't know how. I, I never even the, it, they it. turned it into a TV show TV on show, Amazon, yeah. but I never even. Everybody says the TV, TV show. show better because they don't follow the book at all. Uh, right. Yeah. I just saw yeah, there's yeah, a romance yeah. in the show that I digged, so I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, this right. is why I don't read series. I read series. I'm like one book. I'll give my two or one star rating, and then I'll move on. You move on to the next arc you get. Yeah. Very nice. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, the next live show that will be on my channel will be next week at 4.30 Pacific time. It'll be with author Nina Crespo. And I hope to see you all there. Um, any parting words for any of my co-hosts here? No? 
All right. Well, thank you all very much for joining me in this buddy read and this live show. And we'll figure out a date for next month to talk about the murder of Mr. Wickham. So until then, we will see you later.